webinar today. Um, I want to give you some technical um, information while you are participating in today's webinar. If you have a question and you're familiar with the GoToWebinar platform, feel free to use the questions panel. You can raise your hand or simply uh, type the message in the chat box and we will answer those questions as, as they come. Also, if you have an issue with while you're in the webinar or you get kicked out, please uh, send me an email to showard71 at hotmail.com and I'll be able to assist you the best I can to get you back into the webinar. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Janice and she's going to introduce our uh, presenter for today. Good afternoon, everybody. I am really excited for our presenter today. We have Kevin Thorne with us today, who is the owner of Nugget Head Studios. He's also worked in the corporate IT and training and development field and served in the military as well. He's a very well-known industry speaker and a trainer on e-learning development design workflows and is also a certified facilitator in LEGO Serious Play Methodologies. He is an award-winning e-learning designer and developer and a consultant and He's going to share with us today about 360 video, and I'm really excited to hear what he's going to share with us. So I am turning it over right now to Kevin. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks, Dennis. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Hope everybody's uh, staying cool and staying hydrated in this warm summer that we're having. And uh, as uh, Sharita and Janice, Janice said, just go ahead and, um, uh, you know, just drop a question in the chat at any time there's no this is informal so don't worry about interrupting or I'm, i don't want to wait to the end because if you have a question you, you may forget it by the time we get to the end so please uh just drop your questions right in there i'm i'm looking at the panel so I'm, i've got several monitors to kind of give you what's going on on my side my my field of vision is going to be focused on one monitor and your question may come in on another so i'll try to uh uh, stay conscious of that. If not, Sharita or Janet, if you could interrupt me and say, hey, there's a question in the chat, please go answer that, and then I'll, I'll switch gears. So um, here it is, getting started with 360 uh, photos and video. And uh, there's a lot of conversation around this topic. Obviously, it's it's kind of trending, and it's it's been around for a while. Wow, gosh, it's been around for a long time, virtual reality. Um, it, largely in the entertainment gaming space. Um, and it's just now starting to make its way over here into the training and develop, learning and development industry. But there's still some um, some really compelling, great use cases out there, but it's still not quite the meat yet where uh, organizations want to invest in, in the, the process of putting something like this together because it's really about the design, the instruction, um, and the story that goes behind it. And then because of the gear, uh, there's a little bit more involved in the skill sets, uh, the technology, the gear, the, the equipment and things and stuff like that. So um, barrier to entry, it's wide open. Uh, you can go down to the store this afternoon and you can be set up and ready to go. Um, but in terms of learning yet, we're still trying to figure out, you know, is there is there a model? Is there an instructional design model for this kind of thing? Don't know yet, but we're, we're figuring it out, or at least I'm trying to. So my uh, presentation, and then I've got some demos here at the end. So here's kind of the agenda that we're going to um, kind of look at this afternoon. First off, how does it work? How does, how does all this work and some terminology, some different languages, things like that? And then we're going to look at the cameras, what's available to you um, from um, the pocket size, quick, um, you, you know, just go out there and get your little camera and start exploring and experimenting all the way up to the big dogs that are uh, huge investments. <laughs> and then we've got the stitching, editing, sort of uh, how do you put it all together? How do you, how do you get your photos and your video ready? Then we've got platforms and hosting, where to put it. How do you how do you get it out there to share it and get people to use it? Um, and then finally, we got some little questions and some discussion around considerations. And then I've got a demo. So I'm going to show you how to kind of stitch one together. If we have time, it shouldn't take, but I'll show you how to do it in about 10 minutes. If we And I'm going to, I'm going to monitor the clock, see if we have enough time for that. Um, one last thing. So, and, and because I want to, I want to ensure that we get the demo in. If I don't get through 
all of the slides. Um, I'll make these slides available to uh, Sharita and Jana so that he, they can uh, distribute that out to you guys. Uh, but I do want to ensure that we get the demo in place so you can see how easy it really is to get started. Okay, first off, how does it work? You have to capture all all angles, the whole field of view, if you if you if you will. And so it's it's essentially multiple cameras. And this little graphic is a representative of a GoPro camera. So there's four cameras, and each of them have a lens that captures 180 degrees or from side to side. And then you want to overlap those fields of vision. And then you get four different images. And then, as we discuss later, you have to stitch those images together to create that 360-degree panoramic sort of view. And you might have done that in your if you have a smartphone that has that feature in the camera where it allows you to, you know, start your camera at one side and then you just move your camera and it sort of stitches a panoramic view and then you upload that to Facebook and then you can drag your mouse around the image from your friends or you share it. <clears throat> That's essentially the same thing. That's what's happening. There's software built into your phone and your camera that's doing that stitching while you're taking those those photos. And then the platform is Facebook. And then Facebook puts that in its framework and renders it to where you can interact with it and drag and move from side to side. What I'm going to show you is how you can do that yourself. You can manage it. You can build all that yourself. <laughs> um, this is the camera I'm currently using. It's the Samsung Gear. Uh, the 2017 version. This is sort of a silhouette of its shape. It's about, oh my gosh, about three, maybe four inches tall. It's kind of, it's really small. The head of that, where those two lenses are, about the size of a golf ball. So in comparison, you can kind of, um, in your mind, kind of see about how big that is. So it's really small, really mobile. And it's got two lenses built in it, one in the front and one in the back. And each of those cameras do 180 degrees left to right, top to bottom. And then there's software that comes with it or a little app that comes with it. And it produces this spherical lens. So one left side is one camera lens and the other one is the other camera lens. So this is the image that you'd get in your, uh, once you take the picture and you say, oh, I got this. I've got this 360 photo, and this is what you see. You say, well, that's not 360. That looks like a binoculars. But we have to stitch it together first. Oh, a little too fast. So here's a photo of the Lego store in Disney uh, down in Florida. So here's an example of what one of those images look like. So you see me standing there. I'm holding the um, uh, with a monopod, and then at the top of the pod is the camera. And one lens is looking back towards me over my head, and the other lens is looking forward to the other side of the store. And then what the stitching does, it's called equirectangular. There's your new new word of the day. Equi, equirectangular. It took me a while to name, <laughs> pronounce that. But essentially, this is it. What, what's happening is we have, to, we have to take those two and stitch them together to get those curves and stitch those two together. So if you look at this grid, the horizon, the horizon line is essentially your eyesight, your eyesight, your sight level. So whatever you're five foot, six foot, seven foot tall, however tall you are, your 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 sight line is the horizon. And then to your right is really to the right. So if you where you see the word right, that's if you were to where you're sitting right now. If you were to turn your head to the right, that's what you see. You turn your head to the left, that's what you see. And then you see the back all the way over to the far right and all the way to the far left of this image. Think of rolling this graphic around to itself to where those two back labels touch each other. And that would be the back. So the horizon line where you're looking in the center, that's sort of the front. You're, that's your, you're looking forward. And then wrap those two around you to the back. And that would, would be what if you were to turn around and look behind you. And then, of course, top and bottom. So we're going to take those those two lens images and we're going to stitch it into this equirectangular format. And then that's what it looks like once it's stitched together. So you see now I'm in the center and that's the bottom. If I were to look down from the camera height, you look all the way to the top is the lights in the ceiling. Left, right, back, and then all the way around to the back. Pretty cool. 
I think it's 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 it makes you dizzy, <laughs> but you have to know you kind of have to know what you're looking at, and the more you work with these types of images, you start understanding where things fit, and you understand that space, that geometrical space, so it forms these natural curve lines. I'm just checking, I'm looking over here, just checking, no questions yet, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, now once we've we've got our pictures or video, it's the same thing, um, and we um, export them out and then we stitch them and then we have to publish them for viewing and there's two ways to do that probably the most common is just simply sharing them and that's just uploading it to a host like a YouTube or Facebook and there's Flickr and Instagram and I think Instagram's not supporting it um, 360 as well and then those platforms then construct it into that interactive where you can drag around like Facebook the other way is to do it yourself. And obviously, if you do it yourself, you have more control. And there's actually two ways to do that. There's a lot of free services and platforms and, and uh, websites out there now where you you upload your photos to those sites, and then you can build a story. You can add hotspots and labels, and you can add other elements and make it interactive. There's free versions of that, but then when you, when you want to start using all of the real intricate components, like hotspots and such like that, uh, then there's a sub subscription fee for that. And then finally, the third way, or the second way of sub 2A and 2B, if you will, um, is to simply code and program yourself in web VR framework. Um, and that just requires, obviously, it's a, it's a new skill. So there's a learning curve to um, learn how to code and program it and, and get everything done. If, if you have the time for that, if that's something you want to do, um, then you have complete 100% control. So you have to look at the value of it. If you don't want any control, you just want to make 360 videos and upload them to Facebook to your maybe a group site or something. You can you can do that by this afternoon. Uh, if you want a little bit more involvement, a little bit more activity, then there's a little bit more steps to take and to do that. All right, I'm going to pause right here and see if there's any questions uh, that we have. And I don't see anything in chat. Am I missing anything, um, Sharita or Janeth? I don't no, look there are not any questions. Okay, great. We'll just keep going then. So now the cameras. Here's the gear. These top five cameras is based on a, a PC Mag review from 2018. So it's it's a very recent uh, roundup article, if you want. And there's the the link if you want to go read more about these cameras. Uh, the Samsung Gear 360, here's an image of it that I showed you a minute ago. This is the camera I use today. And again, this is obviously exploded view, but it's about three inches tall. And they're relatively inexpensive uh, in terms of uh, cameras. I mean, think of what you have to buy on a smartphone to get that camera as, a, as opposed to a camera like this. And there's always deals out there. So if you go out to Amazon and you look, um, I wouldn't necessarily get it right from Samsung. I got mine from Amazon. And I think I paid a little uh, closer to like 180, but it came with a little case and some protective, you know, case for it and an extra tripod and an extra monopod. Um, so it depends on it, you know, what you want to do if you want to get some extra ex accessories to go with it. Um, GoPro's got one, um, and you know, interesting. Um, what 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 I find fascinating about this sort of movement is that every week. It seems like every week there's a new camera, there's a new website, there's a new framework. It is moving so fast right now. Uh, it's it's almost virtually uh, too, too, too fast to keep up with. So even as of April 2018, there's newer stuff out there. There's a um, and I don't have it in this presentation. I just discovered it earlier uh, called Views V U Z E. Uh, it's a new camera, about the same price as this one. Um, and then we have um, the Kodak. Each one of these has their different reviews, some some uh, they have pros and cons either way. So it's it's just kind of comparing them and see which ones you like. And these are all very small, compact. All these cameras I'm showing you fit in the palm of your hand. So they're not really large um, DSLR, DSLR size Canon or Nikon cameras. These are very small in terms of um, their footprint, if you will. Here's Nikon's version of the 360 camera called the Key Mission. Um, this is a, I like this one. This would be my next upgrade if I get the next, if I 
get in the next camera, I'd be, I think I want to get this one. But I'm looking at that views, and I'm sorry I don't have a picture of that one now, but it, it comes with uh, stereoscopic microphones. And I don't have that really in this presentation, but while I'm on that um, subject, stereoscopic is if if you and I were sitting across the table from each other and we're having a conversation and you were to turn your head all the way around and look behind you, my voice, the, the, my voice level changes because you're not listening straight on. So what happens is the, the, the sound of my voice fades away as you look in a different direction. Well, with the current, like the 360 um, Samsung camera that I'm using, it just has one camera or excuse me, one microphone. So it's picking up sound from all over the place. No matter if you're looking one way or the other, the sound doesn't change. Another great example of that is if you're standing on, say, a pier or a dock, and you hear seagulls in the distance, and then as you turn, the, the birds, the sound of the birds aren't quite as loud as you turn away from them and you turn back, you hear more. So that's what's called stereoscopic um, microphones. And the new Views camera comes with those built in. So there's a camera pointing at each one of those cameras. You got a microphone for each camera. So there's four cameras, and each one has its own microphone. This one is probably the most popular. It's a little bit more expensive. But these are um, the size of that. If you, if you were to lay a credit card up next to this, it would be about the size, a little, little narrower than a credit card, but about the height of a credit card. And it's about a little about. Um, about the thickness of a smartphone. So these are really, really small. Uh, they fit right in a pocket, real easy. So, and they come in, you know, neat little colors too. So this is another fun one. And these are, and now keep in mind, you can't really do anything with these other than share. Uh, it's just, just, it's built in technology. You just hit share to Instagram, share to Facebook. But it, it gets you started to, to start experimenting with how does the tech work. And it's easy to start small and inexpensive just so you can get an understanding of w what goes into making these things. Then if you got a budget that's like I don't have, <laughs> you can get some of these gear, these rigs. They're, they're different rigs now. The blue one up in the uh, upper right, that's actually 3D printed. So you can get the plans and uh, send the plans off and have that 3D printed, then of course you have to purchase 12 GoPro cameras, 16 GoPro cameras, no, 12, uh, no, there's eight for that one up in the upper right and then 16 for the Odyssey. And the Odyssey um, is as well, same with the GoPro Mini, or the Omni, excuse me. So the cameras don't come with it, so I don't know what GoPro cameras are today, but just imagine a couple hundred bucks per camera plus the rig. So you're looking at thousands of dollars. But the more cameras that you have, the more seamless your uh, stitching comes and, and more high resolution 4K and, and higher when it comes to really, really quality images and video. Okay, that takes care of our cameras. And I'm going to pause right here and I'll just kind of wait for some questions. And I don't see any. Everybody's blown up. They're all out there on Amazon, like shopping right now, looking for cameras. <laughs> Everybody's buying cameras. <laughs> all right, here comes the fun part, the software and the stitching. Here's some uh, links and some um, software that is available. If you get the Samsung Gear 360 camera, it comes with this software, the Gear 360 Action Director. And it does sort of everything. It, it's, it's not the best software, but it gets you started where you can start putting them together and figuring out what works, what doesn't work. Um, there's Auto Pano and Video Stitch, uh, Stereo Stitch, Vahana, and then Nadir Patch, and I'll show you a demo of that one here shortly. And that basically just puts everything together for you. And Nadir Patch, um, and I was telling Janice and, and um, Sharita earlier, Nadir is a Greek word that refers to bottom. Or, or the lowest point. So if I, if we go back to that equirectangular grid, if you were to look down at your feet, that's the nadir of your space, of that 360 degree space. And what you what the patch means is, if you remember the Lego store video and I'm holding my camera up in the air, 
um, w- what's going to happen at some point, my hand is going to look distorted because it's stitching right there at my hand. So you put a Nadir patch, a logo, a graphic or something that kind of hides that imperfection of the tripod or if you're holding a monopod, it kind of hides that imperfection. And this website allows you to kind of um, make that, that graphic for you. Here's a screenshot of the action director. <clears throat> and this is uh, on the left, you see the equa rectangular uh, images that were stitched from the Gear 360 camera. And I think those images are from the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. It is. And then on the right is that memorial. So now it's stitched together. And then you can drag it around. And then from here, you just export it. Now, it doesn't do anything else. You can add a, a title, maybe add little transitions. But you can't add any interactivity using this. This just stitches it together and allows you to export it ready for distribution. Uh, this is the app that comes with the camera. Um, so you connect it via Wi-Fi, like uh, Bluetooth, with your camera, with your smartphone, and the, the Gear 360 has a built-in Wi-Fi. So you can remotely operate the camera. You don't have to hold it on a monopod or a tripod. You can go set the camera up in in the park or wherever you want to take the, the, vo- the photo or the video, and then go hide yourself. Because that's the one thing you have to consider when you're taking these, is you're in. It's 360 degrees everywhere, top, bottom, all the way around. So you're going to be in the shot if you're holding the camera. So if you don't want to be in the camera, then what happens is you have to set it up, go somewhere where you're out of view, and then use the remote app as a remote control, and then snap the picture or record the video. Here's some other um, screenshots of those that I showed you uh, in that list, Autopano, Fahana. Uh, and again, there are, uh, all of these are free to get started, and they, they allow you to use some of the initial features. Um, and then once you get comfortable with one of these that you like, just like any software, um, you like one over the other, you like their pricing model over the other, and it just takes time to explore, practice, see what you like. Is it going to fit with what kind of work you're wanting to do? And then um, you, you, know, you, you subscribe to, to one of these if you want. And if if anybody asks, no, I don't subscribe to any of these because I found a couple others I like instead. Editing software. So then there's additional software. When you want to start adding labels to your, to, um, to your images, or you want to add hotspots, or you want to add additional audio track. So maybe you record, but you don't want, you, like, the, the the Samsung Gear 360, like I said, has a mono uh, microphone, so it's picking up sound all the way around. So when I record, I'll take extra microphones and I'll record in different directions, so uh, omni omnidir- or bidirectional, and that way I'll take those audio tracks and go into a software like this and add those sounds in a stereoscopic uh, approach. That way. When you move one way, you hear this sound gets a little louder. If you go this way, this sound gets a little louder. And then frameworks. This is if you're totally geeking out and you love the program and you love the code, go right over here. It's open source, so it means it's totally free, but it requires you to really dig into the code and you have to manually build the entire interaction, the entire experience. I'm fond of A-Frame. A-Frame has a wonderful tutorial that if you're brand new to coding, you start with A-Frame and you walk through it and it'll teach you exactly what to do and where to put. Uh, it's kind of like um, CSS in a lot of ways, ca- cascading style sheets. It all publishes out the WebVR, so that's the framework. And what that means is uh, WebVR is becoming more popular because of um, 360 videos and photos being shared on social media, meaning that it can be uh, it can be shared, interacted with on the desktop by dragging your mouse, or you can take that same image in that same URL, if you will, and you can put it on your phone and then put your phone in a headset and experience the same photo, whether it's on the desktop or in a smartphone. And, and wear a headset and actually get involved and, and experience it. 
and that's what A-Frame does. That, that's the web VR framework. And we're going to have a lot of time to do demos. I'm excited because it's going to, we're, we're going to do some really cool stuff. So platforms and hosting. Here's the platforms I mentioned. There's Facebook, YouTube, Momento 360. That's a really uh, easy, simple one to use as well. It does come with a, a watermark. So um, it, the free does. So you can subscribe, you know, you know like an annual subscription. And they're fairly inexpensive. Um, and the 360, one of the, one of the real um, big industries right now using virtual tours, like real estate, real estate market, where you want to, you're shopping for a house and you go in and uh, you basically take 360, you look around one room, you go look around the master bedroom, you go look around the kitchen, things like that. And Momento is a great way to practice that. So what that was, just, that was my first kind of experiment I took. Um, I was selling a house, a house that I had that I'd been renting for a number of years and then finally sold it. And after we got it all fixed up and cleaned up, it was time to take the photos for the, you know, the real estate website, the, the MLS, whatever you call that. I'm not real estate, so I don't know what it means. Um, but my real estate agent was, we were out there taking pictures and I said, you know what, let's try this. And he was all for it. I said, it's not going to cost you anything. I'm just experimenting. So we took um, 360 degree photos of every room in the hallway and, you know, the, the different rooms and stuff. And then I uploaded them to this Momento and then I sent him the shared link and then he put the link on the real estate's website. So then when visitors came, they clicked on that link and they went to this website, but then they can still, it was a private, you know, a little password, uh, but then you were able to, to kind of virtually tour around the house. So real estate is really big right now. So if, if you know anybody in this market um, and you want to get involved, um, I don't have, and I didn't even think about mentioning that because it's not in our industry, but I was doing some research um, earlier this week in that market and you can make like 150, 200 bucks uh, per visit with, with you just like 20 up to 25 images. So you take your little camera, you drive over to somebody's house, you set up a visit, you do it one hour, you take 25 pictures, you come home, stitch them together, send them back to the real estate agent. You make 250 bucks. Holy cow. I had no idea. There might be a new business vertical coming in my future. Uh, Wistia, Vimeo, um, Vimeo and Wistia are more video platforms than they are photo platforms. Um, if you're not familiar with any one of those, um, they're huge, huge video. Uh, Vimeo is more like a YouTube in a lot of ways, but Wistia is probably, I've got a subscription to Wistia. I really like them um, and they're always right on top of it and great support too. If you're doing a lot more video than you are photos. Um, and then 360 Rise. It's really more of a community. So if you're just looking like blog and forums and you know, what's the latest gear, who's doing the latest thing, um, that's a great great place to start just exploring and just kind of be a kind of a fly on the wall, just kind of looking to see whatever other folks are doing. All the way up to that, you know, those $20,000 camera rigs, all the way down to the simple stuff, the starter stuff. And then we've got some hosting. Uh, and what I mean by hosting is kind of like Memento is Kula, Viar 360, and SeekBeak. And I'm going to show you those three today. Um, each of those um, have significant um, features, even at the free trial. But just, all you got to do is log in and create a little account, and then you can tinker around. But what, what you can do is these, Kula, you can do virtual tours. Viar 360 and SeekBeak allow you to really do interactive stories. Um, and I'm working in those right now on a project I'm doing, and I really like both of those. I haven't settled on which one I like the most, but both of those have their pros and cons in terms of usability. Um, but I'll show you, I'll show you those as well here as soon as we get to the demo. And that should be coming up next right after considerations. So here's some things to consider. Um, this comes from an article on Medium, um, and then some other things that. Um, that I've learned in the last uh, six months to a year playing around with this. Um, but I mentioned this early on, place the camera at your sight height. So basically about the height of an average human, if, I guess you'd say, anywhere between five and six feet. I try to set mine right about five and a half feet. Um, 
and I, I did one thing and it was interesting. My, um, I was, I was taking some photos of some other things and I asked my, um, wife and my stepdaughter and I put it in a smartphone and I put it like Google cardboard, like a headset. And I said, here, can, can you look through this and tell me, you know, what you think, what's the experience? I just wanted sort of a use, you know, a pseudo usability test. And both of them unanimously said, it makes me dizzy. And I said, well, what do you think? I says, looks like I'm way up in the ceiling. And it and it was because I I I remember setting the tripod up at, at its highest level about eight nine feet, and when when she looked down, it made her dizzy because she felt like there was nothing but you know her feet there was nothing there she could stand on, so that's that's a huge consideration just make sure that it's not too high. Um, when it comes to stories and interactions, um, it's one thing to just take a 360 photo and it's just, oh, look at my picture of Yosemite National Park. Uh, give them something interesting to look at. What are they looking around? When, when we talk about learning and development, these are the things that we have to ask ourselves in that design phase before we just go take a bunch of pictures. What are we taking a picture of and why are we doing it? And what are our viewers or our learners going to um, going to want to look at this? Why are they looking at this? And then anticipate the viewer's gaze so it's what are they looking at and then as they turn anticipate where they're going in that view and then what kind of labels and other things you want to do uh, in that in that story if you will um, and this is important number four is important video transitions don't work so anything if you're familiar with video editing or video engineering where you've got the dissolve or you've got the fade in the black or fade out the white um, those work best as opposed to some of those other transitions like the crossfade and things like that. So you might have to explore and experiment with different effects as you put your projects together. Um, motion sickness is a huge thing. Um, there's been some accidents, if you will, of people wanting to try out the, the viewer experience by putting on a headset. Um, and then not realizing the, the, that sort of um, vertigo feeling where you, you, you don't feel like you're grounded and you get dizzy. Um, and then motion sickness comes with that. So be careful with that. Uh, stabilize the shots. Obviously, with a tribal, you can walk around with a monopod while you're walking, but it's going to have that jerky feeling. Um, but again, I just explore. explore. I took a picture of a... Um, and I was really nervous about this, but I wanted to, I was just I wanted to try it. <clears throat> I put the camera on the monopod and then I was at the Gulf Coast and I put um I buried I buried the monopod in the sand right where the waves were crashing on the beach and I buried it down to where the lens of the camera was about three inches above the water as the water came in and went past the camera back up the beach. And then I walked all the way up around behind some bushes and kind of hid because it was kind of early in the morning. There was nobody on the beach, and I just wanted to get um, the, the what what is the what is the like a little bird walking around the beach. What is the perspective of that bird? So when we think about anticipate the viewer's gaze, think of perspective. What's the what can you do with this that you can't do with a regular camera? What does it look like from inside a birdhouse? Put your camera inside the birdhouse and then go take a picture of it. What's the perspective inside the bird? I did one inside the, my refrigerator, and it's like, you know, I always want to does the light go off inside the refrigerator? What happens inside the refrigerator when you shut the door? <laughs> so I took a I took a little LED light and then turned it on and put it on one of the shelves so the light would stay on, or there would be a light. And then I shut the refrigerator door and then I put the 360 camera on one of the shelves and just took a little picture. But it was kind of, it was just, it was, it's a useless picture, but it's kind of cool because you could like, oh, look inside, this is what the shelf looks like up there. And that's what the fruit looks like down there in that drawer. And so it was just an interesting kind of thing. And I kind of play around with that. Like I'll go out and uh, we've got a little herb, gar herb garden. So I've, kind of moved the, some of the herbs out of the way and I put the camera down in the soil and just sat there. What does it look like from, you know, what does a worm look like when it's down there crawling around? What is, what is its perspective? And that's the other thing I encourage you to do. It's, it's not everything you just see on Facebook where somebody's just taking a picture of their family vacation. But when we're thinking about learning and development, we have to think of it differently. 
and what is that anticipation and what's that gaze and what's that experience that you're trying to create um, <clears throat> and then those those last four there hide yourself I mentioned that a couple times unless you're part of the unless you're part of the experience um, and and you're expecting something to happen if it's a video you're certainly expecting something to happen um, and then smart labeling and, and overlays that's just that just comes back to design. It's no different than titling or doing anything with e-learning that you would normally do. So still no questions, so we're going to keep moving. Any questions on this list right here? Okay, demo time. Now, let's see. Um, make sure I do this in order. Hang on just a second. Let me get my... My stuff put together here. We're going to switch screens. Um, okay, I'm going to switch screens and let me know if you can see that okay. It, you should see a website called nadirpatch.com. This is totally free. It's totally open source. Um, in fact, um, tell you what I'll do. Let's put that. I'll put this in chat. So there's the link to that one. What did I? Where did I send that to? The wrong. Ah, hold on. I, I, I'll send it. I'll send it. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you look here, there's a couple. There's a couple options. We have Sphere Cube, Tripod, Sphere again, or Sphere Two Cube, or Sphere Two Patched. I'm going to focus on the last two. Gear 360, because that's the camera that I use. Gear 360 to Stitched, and then Logo to Ready for 360, or the Nadir patch itself, this far right one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little Gear 360, and then oh, don't worry about all the colors in the ad at the bottom. That's just advertisement. Um, and then I'm going to take an image that's not stitched, and I'm going to drag it in. So we drag it, and we just kind of drop it in this little spot right here. And it'll take just a couple seconds. It's doing its magic. Now I did this a couple times before the webinar to make sure that it worked. And it does. Um, and it's obviously we're live now and it's gonna take longer than what it did earlier. So <laughs> come on, you can do it. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna flip over. There it is. So there's this, there's the, you see how it's stitched together, that equi rectangular? This is a gymnasium. And you'll see the final result here in just a second. Um, and then what you do is you download it. And then when you download it, um, now we're gonna switch screens again, because now I'm gonna to go to um, the main screen. There we go. So this is the image that I just dragged into. We're in Photoshop now, but I, this is just a picture of the image. This is the gymnasium. So you can see um, one lens is going to one end and one lens is going back the other way. And it's right in the center court. And if you look at the bottom of that image, you can kind of see the leg of the tripod, that area. So when I stitched it just now using that Nadir patch, all I did was this, uh, let's, let's do a quick review. 360 camera on a tripod sitting in the middle of this gymnasium. Take the picture and then save it off because uh, Gear 360 comes with a little SD card. So you just save off the image to your computer and then you go to this native patch website and you just drag it in there and drop it and they, it, it does the stitching for you. And then when you're done stitching, you download that image and this is what that image looks like. And you can see the tripod down here is all this hole down here at the bottom. That's the tripod. So it's kind of um, distorted. And when we talk about stitching, you can see this little break. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but you see a little break. That's the difference between the quality of the camera. This is just a, a, a small portable camera. So the quality is not going to be like those you know, $1,000 rigs that you could get. And then if we were to overlay that um, grid, hang on, let me see. 
let's see. I think I'm going to, I got to drag some things out of the way here. And oh, come on. There we go. That's the grid now. That's what it looks like. So if you see the curves on that grid, they almost line up perfectly with the structure, the architecture of the building and the floor, you know, plans on the bottom. So it's, 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 it's just taking time to get practice with how this all works together. So now I'm going to go back to that Nadir patch um, website. Let's go back. And go back to the main site. Now I'm going to go to this logo area here. And now we're going to do is we're going to create a Nadir patch. Now to do that, I need an image. So I've got this. Um, I'm going to drop my logo here. Now this project actually I'm working on is for the University of Memphis. So this gymnasium is at the University of Memphis. So there's the um, in the logo. And what you can do here is it, it comes in at 50%. You can see up here at the top. And then I can change the angle, which I can spin it if I want, or I can make it smaller. You can see the percentage change, and we'll keep it at 50%. And then that equi rectangular photo that we just stitched together, I need to bring that back in now and put it in here so I can put these two together. So I'm going to drag this one here, and it's going to do its thing. And of course, it's going to go a lot slower now than it did before. Maybe it's the bandwidth because we're using it for the webinar. But... Oh, my goodness. Well, we can. Let's see. Well, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to jump over back to our Photoshop screen because I've already got it set up over here. What it does, once it gets done stitching, and I'll come back and show you, but what it does when it gets done stitching, it creates this. This is that logo here at the bottom. So it creates that. So if I were to take that and bend it and wrap it around like that circle, that, that that's what that round logo looks like. So I want it at the bottom of my image so that it creates that patch and hides that tripod, if you will. And then you put that image on top of your equi rectangular image, and then you save this image off as a um, as your final image that you want to upload. If that makes sense. So we so let's the review again. We go to the gym. We take our tripod. We set up the camera. We take a picture. We export that picture out. We save it off. We use Native Patch or whatever so stitching software, and we stitch the photo together. And then we export that out, and then we go put our logo in there, and then we get that rendered. And let me show you. It just finished. So let's go back over there. Um, there it is. So that's what it looks like. So you see how it's kind of hiding the tripod down there at the bottom? So it just kind of gives you an example, and I can rotate it if I want. This is the angle, the angle, the rotation. Um, or you can still adjust it. See, if I get it on real small, you see the tripod down here at the bottom? So I want to bring it up just big enough to hide the tripod. About 40%, maybe. And then create. And once you create it, that creates that graphic I just showed you. That creates this graphic. And then you download this graphic. The, the, the nadir patch, if you will, you download it and then you add it back to your other image and then you export this image. Are you tracking with me? We're good. We're almost there. So we've got our image prepared, if you will. Now we have to go put it on our one of our platforms. And as I mentioned, one of them that I use is called the um, um, Kula. So let me let me get in there and. Hang on, let me, okay, we're ready to go. And we flip screens again.
Okay, here's Kula. Let me just go to the main. So K U U L A dot C O. Let me grab that website. It's in these slides, but if you guys want to play around with this now, I'm gonna go ahead and send it to I guess I don't have apps up to, to send to all. Janeth. Oh, Sharita uh, can send it, it out for you. You okay, do have thank access you. at the bottom, but yeah. I can send it. You need to change the audience, but I can send it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the audience. It says organizers only, organizers and panelists only, and then you two specifically, but I don't see an all option. That's okay. Okay, I'll send it I'll to you. Do you want me to send the link? Yeah, just share the link so they can okay. go to the same website if they want. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload a 360 image here. And there's the, um, you can either select it or you can drag it in. So I'm going to grab that same image that we had there in Photoshop a minute ago. And there it is. And if we look down, there's the patch hiding the tripod. But again, so when we talk about the quality of the camera, you see that little imperfection in the, in the line with the wood or the floor of the gym? That's the difference between how well those two cameras line up. So the more cameras you have, like if you put four in a circle, you know, or you put eight, or you put 16, the more cameras you have, the higher quality your images. This is only two images. So there's always going to, or two lenses, there's always going to be a um, significant, you can see where the stitch line is. But, but this is like what you would drag around in Facebook, right? So here's, go all the way to the top. Now this up here is called the zenith. All, if you look straight up in the air, that's the zenith of the image, and that's the nadir of the image pretty cool this is this is free i don't this is not the pro now a couple things you can do once you're in here which is nice this is the sight line so this is that horizontal line and this is the starting point so if you want your image when it first loads or first the, the viewer first gets there and you want it to right here then you line up this anchor so the first time this image loads it's going to this is where it's going to start. So wherever you want to put it, you know, it's up to you. Then over to the right, we've got some, um, you know, description of what this image is. You can add it to a tour. I'll show you that in a minute. Now this, it, it's um, it, the free version is public. So anytime you create something, it's going to be open to the public. If this is something specific to your organization, then you have to consider you know, the pro version, which is a subscription. It's like $8 a month, I think, for this one. Um, you can add stickers. So it's got all these little emojis we can add. So you can put a little sticker over here. But notice how these things stay with. See how they change? So I can put a sticker right here, and it stays in that. It anchors to that where I put it. Increase the size maybe a little bit. Say okay. No, I didn't want. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Hang on, I messed up. Let's start over. There we go. Um, hold on. Let's see. Why is that not doing that? Close. Are you sure you want to discard the photo? No, I don't want to discard the photo. Preparing image. Okay. We'll just do this. Um, then down here we have, we can add text. So if I want to add a text label, we can call this the uh, gymnasium. And then again, here's your label. Where do you want it? Let's put it over here on the brick wall. So when they spin around this way, there's the label. Preparing image. I guess what's going on here? Okay. I've got some other stuff already set up in here. We'll close this out. 
I know I'm logged in. So that's weird. Let's just go to this tour. And here is what a tour looks like. So here's a bunch of images down here, and it's, it creates this tour where you can go to each one of these images. So if you were to put this in your smartphone, and you can look around, and then what's missing here, I've not put them in yet. So for instance, um, you see this door way over here in the background? with the, these two door, one door goes out through another room and then this door goes into a little office right here. Well, you can put a hotspot right here and then the user in the goggles, there's a little switch or you have a, a, a paddle that you hold in your hand that's got like a, a, like a controller, like a remote controller. And then with the headset on and the smartphone in the headset, looking at this image, and as you move your head around, you're, it's, that's web VR. This is a web VR platform. So in this browser format, I have to click and drag. But if this was in a headset, it would move with your head as you move your head around. And then there's a little, um, you can put a hotspot there and click on it. And then what that would do would jump over to, and then you would go inside the room. So there's the door on the inside. And then you put another hotspot there and go back to where you just were. So you can create this tour where you can click links and it fades out to the other image and goes into where you are in that room. Click and go to another room. So there's still some, um, this is, this, here's the lab. You see it back through the window right there? This is the, this is that door, my fault. It's a, it was a different door, but you see the lab back here. And if I come back to the lab, then that's that door in the glass that you look through. So pretty cool. And then you just create this tour. Now, then you can, what's really neat too, is you can export this whole thing. So if you wanted to put this out on a website, so then you take it and it exports out like this. So here's the entire tour. You put this on a website and then you can click on this uh, info button up here and then you can convert it over to the Google Cardboard or the headset which then uh, allows viewers to just access it from from a website and then put their headset on and then experience the whole thing really cool the other one um, there's SeekBeak and Viar so Viar 360 um, is and then we have SeekBeak here's that same gym now this works what they call snaps. So you create a group and then you have a snap, if you will. And then you go into the snap itself and it's kind of that same same image that we used before. Um, but if you notice, notice the difference between how this one interacts, this one's really responsive with my mouse as opposed to this one. I don't know if you can see my mouse. I can drag my mouse, but it's kind of a latency of the image catching up with where my mouse is at. Whereas this platform, it's got it's a lot more responsive. So it just depends. And this is this is the geeky part of playing around with different platforms. What works better? Um, I like this one in terms of its um, ability to add hotspots. So at the bottom here, you've got this little menu. And you can do different things. So if I want to add um, another hotspot, and then we can go to the hotspots itself and do the type of hotspot. So is it a link? Do you want to be able to access email? Do you want to play an audio file? Do you want to embed some other picture, um, image, other whatever you want to do, different things. Um, or you can do a icon so if you wanted to tweet out this image you can put the tweet here or the twitter and then you can put you know maybe your your twitter handle and simply accept it and then now this is a new hotspot and i'll put it right there we'll say save that and now 
the hotspot stays in that location. And now it becomes a link. So if I click on that, there's no, I click on it, but there's no, um, there's no hyperlink yet. So this is a, this is a neat platform as well. It's really intuitive. I mean, there's, there's a very, very, very little learning curve. It's just time like any other user interface, where are all the pieces at, where are all the parts at, um, the tools and different things. Then Viar 360. Let me come back to the let me come back to the beginning here. Let me show you an example. Um, nope, it's Viar. Hang on, this one. Let me go back to the beginning of Viar. Viar. I think it's pronounced Viar or VR. Come on. There we go. The um, this is a company. I believe they're um, they're they're in Europe somewhere. Um, where are they located? I believe it's Europe. Anyway, they've got this um, sort of starter ex um, example, if you will, and it's where Melania Trump grew up. It's like her hometown. Um, if it loads here, it's an interesting kind of interactive story. But this is what you can build with this. So it starts out with a little card, um, what's going on, then you go next. <laughs> you click on the next button and nothing happens. Oh, it's still spinning. It's thinking. There it comes. So you see, this is that starting. So it's a big graphic here in the clouds, and it also has a guided tour, which has a lot of audio um, and music playing. So if we click on the guided tour, I don't think you can hear it, but there's a narrator um, doing a narration right now. So you can, I don't know if you can hear let me turn it up and then see if you can hear it. Known for lumber and, so, and as the narrator, you can, um, you know, kind of navigate around and then or skip the introduction. And then there's some other things you can share this one on Facebook about the project, explore on your own. And then when you explore on your own, that comes into more of the hotspot thing where you're actually linking out to different um Well, it is now locked up. No, no problem, right? That's just how things it worked great this morning a couple times. But anyway, that's um, that's just a fraction of what's going on out in this space right now. Um, I'm going to flip back over to my power, my presentation so that we can close this out. Oh, uh, I didn't want to do that. Hang on. There we go. So that wraps us up for the hour. Um, there's so much more. I wish I could spend time with you guys sharing what's going on. It's really just, if I can invite you all into my studio for an afternoon and just tinker around with all this stuff, I'd love to do that. But um, if you're if you're interested and you're curious about this, this, what I just showed you, um, other than buying a camera, is there's no cost. So if you got a hundred bucks or 150 bucks, go get you a camera uh, and then just start playing, just start exploring and just tinkering around with these different uh, tools and platforms and hosting. Um, and then, then from there, once we understand how it all comes together, how we can put things together in terms of the technology and the gear, then we can start studying the instructional models. What is a good instruction? What is it for learning? How, what is this different than e-learning or a video or some other media? Um, instead of just chasing a shiny object because everybody else is like doing VR right now, um, there has to be there has to be value uh, before you you know dive deep in and then nobody cares. I care. So, any questions at all?
You guys have been so quiet. I don't see any questions, but it was so, for me, it was so intriguing and interesting. You just don't know what to ask. <laughs> you just want to get out there and try. It's like, I have no idea what to ask. <laughs> no, it is. Well, I just, I started playing around with this last year and um, just more of a curiosity for myself to see if it was worth, you know, digging more into. And the more and more this uh, project with the University of Memphis, it's actually um, a, a distance learning virtual tour for students that don't come to campus. So it, it gives them the opportunity to kind of explore around the school um, as if they were here. So it's it's kind of like a proof of concept for them to see if it's worth investing more. Uh, because that's, that's essentially, you know, managing the expectations of here's what they're interested in doing. And they were ready to go buy TVs and Oculus Rift and all these sort of other VR stuff. And we just had to have a conversation. Well, let's slow down. Let's let's build some proof of concepts to see if there's any value here. Get some feedback from the students and get some feedback from the viewers to find out if there's value in putting these types of projects together. And that's where we're at right now. We're about to we're about to demo that proof of concept. Um, and that's just the starting. It's the crawl, walk, run. There's a question in the box that asks if there's any data tracking on interactions. There is. And in fact, this Axel Vire 360 um, has, um, if you sign up with that one, I'll flip my screen over again. Uh, let's see, which one is it? I got to look at my notes. Screen two. There we go. You see the analytics? So this comes, this is just that one image I've been playing with right now. Um, but if you put an entire, like for instance, that um, other tour that I just showed you, if you put something like that together and get it out there and share it, then this comes with all the data analytics that you need for that interaction, who who visited, platform, um, browser refer. Now, I think what you're referring to, if I understand the actual, um, let's see right here, the Melania story. Um, I think you were at the question is more about can you can you who interacted with what hotspots those types of analytics and certainly you can um, I would <clears throat> I'm also exploring XAPI if you haven't heard about that yet so and it's a it's a framework so it just depends on if these platforms support XAPI if not then you would use that framework of like a frame that I showed you that I, that I mentioned in the deck and then you can code in your own statements and capture exactly exactly what you're wanting how many times did somebody click on this hotspot versus this other hotspot so the answer is yes you could there's some of these platforms have built-in analytics and you certainly have the ability to, to code in your own okay kevin we i'm very excited for what you just shared with us and we really appreciate you taking out the time to be with us so we hope everybody got some really good info from this and you're going to roll right out and start putting this into practice so we can learn how to how to be better at sharing 360 video with our audiences thank you for being with us today and everybody have a great rest of the day this thank is the you end of our much. time Thanks, Janice. Thanks, Sharita. This was fun. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks. We enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.